The Korean axe murder incident was the killing of two United States Army officers, Captain Arthur Boniface and Lieutenant Mark Barrett, by North Korean soldiers in 1976 in the Joint Security Area located in the Korean Demilitarized Zone. The slain officers had been part of a work party cutting down a tree in the area. Three days later, American and South Korean forces launched Operation Paul Bunyan, an operation that cut down the tree with a show of force to intimidate North Korea into backing down, which it did. In the joint security area, near the Bridge of No Return, a 30-meter tall poplar tree blocked the line of sight between a United Nations command checkpoint and an observation post. Running across the middle of the bridge was the military demarcation line between North Korean and South Korean territories. On August 18, 1976, a group of Korean Service Corps personnel were escorted by the United Nations Command Security Team consisting of several US and South Korean soldiers. They proceeded to the Joint Security Area to trim the tree. They had with them limited weapons and axes for the tree trimming. After trimming began, about 15 North Korean soldiers appeared. The North Koreans appeared to observe the trimming without concern for approximately 15 minutes, until their commander told the Americans and the South Koreans to cease their activity, stating that the tree could not be trimmed. US soldier Captain Boniface ordered the detail to continue and turned his back on the North Koreans. After being ignored by Boniface, the North Korean commander sent for reinforcements. Within minutes, a North Korean guard truck crossed the bridge and approximately 20 more North Korean guards disembarked carrying crowbars and clubs. The North Korean commander again demanded that the tree trimming stop. When Boniface again turned his back on him, the commander removed his watch, carefully wrapped it in a handkerchief, placed it in his pocket, and then shouted, kill the bastards. Using the axes dropped by the tree trimmers, they attacked the two US soldiers, Boniface and Barrett, and wounded all but one of the United Nations guards. Boniface was knocked to the ground and then bludgeoned to death by at least five North Koreans. The entire fight lasted for only 20 to 30 seconds before the United Nations command force managed to disperse the North Korean guards and place Boniface's body in their truck. Lieutenant Barrett had jumped over a low wall down into a depression for cover during the fight, which was not visible from the road. The United Nations Command was unaware at that time that Barrett was missing. However, they did observe the North Korean guards exhibiting strange behavior, in that one guard would take an axe and go down into the depression for a couple of minutes, and then come back up and hand the axe to another guard, who would repeat the process. This went on for approximately 90 minutes, until they learnt that Barrett was missing, at which time they informed their superiors about the North Koreans' activity in the depression by the road. A search and rescue squad was quickly dispatched, and found that Barrett had been attacked with an axe by the North Koreans. Barrett was recovered and transferred to a hospital, but died during the journey. In response to the axe murder incident, the United Nations Command determined that, instead of trimming the branches that obscured visibility, they would cut down the tree with the aid of overwhelming force. The operation, named after mythical lumberjack Paul Bunyan, was conceived as a US-South Korean show of force, but was also carefully managed to prevent further escalation. Operation Paul Bunyan was carried out on August 21st at 7 a.m three days after the killings. A convoy of 23 American and South Korean vehicles drove into the joint security area without any warning to the North Koreans. In the vehicles were 16 military engineers equipped with chainsaws to cut down the tree. These teams were accompanied by two 30-man security platoons from the joint security force who were armed with pistols and axes. At the same time, a second team had activated the detonation systems for the charges on the Freedom Bridge, and had guns aimed to ensure that the bridge would fall should the order be given for its destruction. In addition, a 64-man task force of the South Korean Special Forces accompanied them, armed with clubs, M16 rifles, and M79 grenade launchers. Several also had M18 Claymore mines strapped to their chests with the firing mechanism in their hands. A US infantry company circled behind them in 20 utility helicopters and seven Cobra attack helicopters. Also in the air were several fighter jets, Phantoms, F-111s, and bombers with nuclear capabilities. On the ground was heavily armed US and South Korean infantry and artillery. 
Altogether, the task force called Viera consisted of 813 men. Two engineers left their vehicles once the convoy arrived and immediately started cutting down the tree. The remainder of the task force dispersed to their assigned areas around the tree and assumed their roles of guarding the engineers. North Korea quickly responded with about 150 to 200 troops. The North Korean troops began setting up two-man machine gun positions, where they watched in silence as the tree was felled in 42 minutes, avoiding a violent confrontation. Also removed were two road barriers installed by the North Koreans, while the South Korean troops also vandalized two North Korean guard posts. The attempt at intimidation was apparently successful. According to an intelligence analyst monitoring the North Korean tactical radio net, the accumulation of force, quote, blew their f***ing minds. Although the operation was carried out peacefully, there was concern that it could spark a wider conflict. The incident led to increased tensions along the Korean demilitarized zone, but did not develop into full-scale war. Later on the day of Operation Paul Bunyan, they received a message from Korean leader Kim Il-sung, expressing regret at the initial incident. It was the first time since the cessation of hostilities of the Korean War in 1953 that North Korea had accepted responsibility for violence along the demilitarized zone. The site of the tree became the location of a stone monument with a brass plate inscribed in the memory of Captain Arthur Boniface and Lieutenant Mark Barrett. <laughs>